Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle back again tonight, continuing the live USB series that we started a few videos ago, where we made a live USB. We actually made it on Rufus, uh, on Windows, but you can make an even better one if you use a live USB maker tool on Annex and MX, but I digress. Uh, then we set it up with persistence. Now I'm going to show you uh, a piece where you can help maintain your live USB, um, whereby we take the persistence files and remaster them into a brand new core file so that it frees up your persistence file for more data. Now why would you want to do this? I'm going to show you. So I'm fired up my MX Linux Live USB and it's got a uh, persistence file in it that's rather large and I'm going to show you that here real quick. You'll see that it's loading the persistence file. It is 1.48 gigabytes. That's because I just basically did the Debian updates to Debian 10.2 plus a few other sundry items. Uh, since the persistence file has a finite size, you want to take that information that's in the persistence file and cram it back down into the Linux FS file. That's the that's the file that comes with the live USB. That's the default read-only file system. So let me show you where on the system. First, we'll just do a quick deep dive here into the live boot dev directory and this is where uh, the information is stored so we have in here we have the Linux FS file that's the default uh, file that stores the file system that stalls your running files your running system as shipped from the factory so to speak as shipped from MX or antics so that file is here most of your Linux distros out there have that file the special one you'll see here is rootfs. That's where we're storing all the changes when we do updates, where we install programs, whatever. It goes into that rootfs file and becomes part of our running file system. And that file is what loads into RAM when you use the dynamic root persistence or the standard persistence files. That file stays read from the disk if you use the static persistence files, which to be fair, I tend to do on my RAM strapped machines because USB 3 ports are fast and I don't notice all that much. So let me, uh, but it's neither here or there. That's that's here on the on the that's the actual picture of the of the device. But we don't need to know any of that stuff to actually do the remaster. In Antix and in MX, there are slightly different routines. In Antix, it's just called remaster. In MX, it's in the remaster control center. It's exactly the same program. So you click the remaster button. Get your password in there. And now it's going to say, "Do you want to do a remaster general?" or a personal. Personal will try to take the home I think and put it into the file system. I try to keep my home files separate. Um, I don't really want them in my base system just in case I screw something up. So I'm going to leave mine on general. Do you want to save the files under slash home on a remaster? No I don't. Now let's go check and see if there's enough room. Now beyond default um, the USB system, if you take the defaults for setting up persistence files, it tries to leave enough room on the USB device so that remaster can work. Okay, so now we get some information. We see we have a current Linux FS size of 1.36 gigabytes, an estimated new size of 2.30 gigabytes if we use the LZ4 compression. That's going to remaster very fast, but it's going to be a little bit bigger file. The flip side is it boots pretty fast. Uh, gzip is kind of a middle ground and xz is what mx ships with by default it, it it's the most compression but it takes the most to get going um, you can see the it has more information here about the boot device and how much room's left on it and various uh, 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 files now one thing you don't have to worry about files you have stored if you don't if you exclude slash home then Files that are stored in your live USB storage folder are not going to be included in your remaster, and you don't want them to be really because they're uh, they're probably personal files or whatever. They don't really need to be part of that core operating system. So I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the default uh, LZ4 compression system because it's fast uh, and it will make the file very uh, faster. Um, I, I recommend you give that a try. Uh, if space is at a premium, uh, gzip and xz will make give you a smaller file on the disk. Just be aware that if you do LZ, I ran LZ compression the other day on a, on a system uh, with snapshot, um, which is related but not the same application, and I ended up with a Linux FS file of 16 gigabytes with the other compression formats. It was more like eight, so uh, it can be a big, big difference. All right, so I'm gonna do that. This system's relatively plain, Jane. 
Do you want to use all the CPUs? That's personal preference. It'll it'll try to use all the CPUs to do the compression. It'll be faster, but it will get hot. If you got a machine that's strapped for heat, um, you might want to just use uh, one uh, or or half your CPUs. Uh, I have a ThinkPad T530. I use all the CPUs, and I'm never running into problems. This is running a virtual box right now. My live system's running a virtual box, so it's going to use my my one virtual CPU that I've given it anyway, so it doesn't much matter. You can give it a name if you wish. Now let's go do its thing. You can see you get this little progress bar, and but up here is where the action's happening. It's making a make squash FS. That make squash FS is taking the, all your file, your running file system, and compressing it back down into a lin, to the new Linux FS file. And since we're taking the running file system and doing this, you're getting all the changes, including what's stored in your root FS files. That's how the magic kind of works. It is a complicated weave of bind mounts and antics magic to make this work. You don't need to know what any of that does to use it. This will this will do the trick. Alright, and there we go. It's done. It's created our new compressed file system. The file should be used automatically the next time you boot. That's fantastic. And there's even a rollback option if you want to go if you need to go back to your old one. I'm gonna say okay here. It says do you want to make a new rootfs file now? You can uh, if you want, what since you've remastered, you don't have the old rootfs file anymore, so you can make a new one. I like doing it from the boot menus, uh, but you can do it here if you wish. I'm going to say cancel that because I don't really want to. And yes, now how do you use that new file? All you got to do is reboot. So we're going to reboot, and we're going to see some boot menu, some, some some boot text come up telling us that. It is remastered. Oh, first we're going to save a persistent file here. Um, I'm not sure that save is going to actually do a whole lot with the remaster coming up, but let's see what happens. So it should ask us here in just a second. Yes, it says root persistence was 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 requested, but no rootfs was found. So we'll say okay, you can create it automatically. Do I want to swap file? No. So you go through the usual routine. If I'd had the boot messages shown, okay. So you, so we remaster. So we got to set up our password again because the system kind of defaults back to its um, well to the defaults, I guess. What you didn't see was under the hood, the Linux FS being copied over and remastered. That shows up on the in the boot text, but the new text boot splash hit it, so you didn't see it. But all of our changes are here, and uh, and in our and our updates are all incorporated into the base file system now. So we can actually, if we want to, we can. And I recommend to do this. That's not what I wanted. Persistence. Here we go. Here we go. So you can see we have our uh, rootfs or linfxf old. We have all these old files now hogging up space on the drive. We can always go back if we want to, uh, just by renaming the files or letting the 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 rollback boot option take care of it for us. Uh, I'm going to assume that I have now lived with this for a couple of days and it's fine. I don't want to go back, but I want to reclaim the space on the hard drive. So we have this fixed, delete, or outdated files. We click that. It says, hey, look, your rootfs old's there. Do you want to delete it? Yes, I do. And then it's going to say, hey, look, you got a linuxfs.old file. Do you want to delete that? Yes, I do. All right. We could do the persistence file, resize the persistence file if we wanted to. There is a persistence file resize option. I'm not going to do that this video because, honestly, it's plenty big for what I needed to do. And uh, But I'll leave that for you to explore and discover. So that is remastering your Annex Live USB system as shown on MX Linux. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or annexlinux.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night. Dooby dooby doo, making a remaster. Dooby dooby doo, gonna make my 
USB faster. Doody doody do. Gonna use less RAM. Doody doody do. Ba 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 boom.